in the last sourdough bread recipe, I showed you the simplest sourdough bread you can make. It's only four ingredients. It was starter, salt, water, and flour. So, and I didn't use any special tools. I didn't use a, a bread form or anything. It took about 16 hours to make it. This recipe is going to show you how to use a KitchenAid mixer or really any kind of mixer. I just want to show off my new commercial KitchenAid mixer. And the recipe is slightly different. Um, we're going to use those same ingredients, but we're going to add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of butter. And what that does is the butter will um, make the bread a little bit softer and the sugar will make it just a little bit sweeter than just a straight up sourdough bread. Um, basically the way that you start this, and I got to use a cheat sheet. Um, I know most of this off the top of my head. But um, three quarter cups of water at like room temperature. Um, that would also be 175 grams. Let's turn the scale on, get everything centered like I always do. Um, this mixing bowl is an eight quart mixing bowl and it's pretty big. I've also found out too with most sourdoughs, the amount of water that you use is going to be plus or minus what a recipe calls for. The deciding factor is how wet or dry your sourdough starter is. So we want 175 grams of water, about three quarters of a cup. If it's too wet, I just put 183 in there. That's close enough. All right. Next thing you're going to want to do is 200 grams of active starter, which is about one cup. Now this is my starter. I fed this about three hours ago it was all the way down to around 725 which is this line here and now it's all the way up here so definitely have a very active starter I want 200 grams of that which means I need to be at about 383 give or take as you can tell I don't really do these like exactly I So I know that I was at the correct measurement before that phone call. My battery is also about to die on this, on this. My phone is still blowing up. This is like every day. So let me replace the battery in the camera. Let me start over where we need to be at. <laughs> you, you, you guys have no idea. Okay, so for like five or ten minutes, my phone wasn't blowing up while I changed the battery. Watch what happens. So I know that I have the correct amount of starter and water in here. What you want to do now is take a wire whisk or a spoon or just about anything and just stir this up in your water. Break it up somewhat. Now, it doesn't matter that my scale shut off because I was right where I needed to be. And see, well, you can't really see, but what I do is I always know how much I need for a recipe and I always leave just a little bit more in the bottom. Um, I could, you only really need a taste, tablespoon or two and if you look at how that's, there's not as much in there as what it looked like. There's maybe a couple tablespoons. But that's all I need to make the next batch. So we've got our water, three quarters of a cup. We got one cup of our sourdough starter. Um, the next thing you want to do is add about a tablespoon of butter. I'm just going to eyeball it because again, the only time I really do exact measurements is on the flour amount. Um, I'm just going to eyeball. That looks like a tablespoon to me. Close enough. If you want the butter to be somewhat softened, it doesn't have to be like 
water, but it should be somewhat soft. Um, seven grams of salt. I, I bake so much with salt, I know about what seven grams looks like. <laughs> We're just going to eyeball it. seven grams salt we also want about seven grams of sugar sometimes I usually go about a teaspoon and a half on the sugar it's a plastic spoon that's probably pretty close to seven grams then you want to go ahead and mix this up too And next, we are going to add our flour. 400 grams of flour. As soon as I remember what I did with the flour. All purpose flour, 400 grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the scale back on. It's gonna zero to the weight of everything that's in there already. Hopefully I have 400 grams. I, I've got another bag. I'm getting pretty close to being out. In case that goes out, there's 263. Four hundred grams of flour. So you want to take and mix this up somewhat. That will also kind of let you know where you stand as far as your saturation level, the wetness level of your dough. Still looks pretty dry to me. I'm going to add just a little bit more water to it. Again, if you bake, if you make bread as often as I do, you will eventually learn what the dough should look like. So, once I get the dough, I'll show you here in a minute. Let me get this off my fingers. Once you get everything somewhat mixed up, this is what we look like. Still kind of dry, but not, not like too dry. So then you're basically going to use your mixer to knead this. And you want to do this on low. After you plug it in, it usually helps. And you raise the bowl up. I'm going to actually get a spatula and scrape the side of the bowl. As the dough is pulling away from the sides, which you can see that it is now, you're going to set basically a timer for eight minutes. So what I'm going to do is let this down. Next thing you want to do, you want to flour a surface. Flour. Doesn't have to be a lot, just some flour rolled around on whatever surface you're going to use. I always use the back of this cutting board. You can use the top of a counter. Uh, your countertops are granite. That works also. I just always use a cutting board. It's what I've always used as far back as I can remember. Now we're going to take our dough. 
out of our bowl. Add it to our cutting board. And if you've got a roller, you can use it. You want to kind of flatten it out some. Don't have to be perfect. I'm going to flip this over too. What I'm doing is trying to get this into a rectangular shape. So I'm moving it around to get it where I want it to be at. Forcing some down where I want it. Don't have to be perfect again. Now the next part you can either use a bread mold or you can use cast iron pan or aluminum or whatever you got. I'm going to use this because it's what I have. So I just want to take and put a little bit of vegetable oil on this. That's probably way too much. But I'm going to use a paper towel to soak a lot of that back up. I got way too much vegetable oil in here. <laughs> but oh well. Another trick you can do, you can actually do like a really light coat of vegetable oil and then Sprinkle some flour around on the inside and shake it up and that'll keep your bread from sticking also. Alright, so once we got that done, the reason why that I was doing that is whatever you're going to put your bread in. You want the finished size of this to be about that size. So you can see that this is somewhat triangular it's irregular but it's somewhat triangular but if I put it this way it's about the right size right it's about the same width that's because we're gonna roll this just like this hopefully it don't stick too much this is actually sticking so we're not gonna stick now now if you look, I'm a little bit too big. That's all right. We'll take this and we'll raise this up and we'll fold this under. And we'll raise this up and we'll fold that under. And then we'll just kind of like stretch the tops around and then tuck it. See how I'm kind of like forming a loaf there? See that? This goes now in the pan. Once it's in the pan, it's kind of like spread it around. Don't have to be perfect. Because as it expands and rises, it's going to fill that out anyways. Then take some plastic wrap. Cover the top of this pan. The plastic wrap keeps the moisture locked into the pan while it's rising so that the dough don't dry out on top. Once you got that done, you want to stick it somewhere and let this rise. They will say until it doubles in size, I usually wait until it gets slightly above the edge of the pan. Um, inside an oven is a good place to put it. Uh, leave your oven light on. It'll help it to go quicker. This could take anywhere from two to six or even eight hours. Just depends on how active your sourdough is. So I'm going to stick it in the oven. Then I'll bring you back when it's done. So the bread's now been in the oven with the light on for probably about four or five hours. Definitely have a good form. I can see it. 
what I need to do is remove this plastic So I've removed the bread from the oven and I turn the oven on 400 degrees while it's preheating. Um, so while it's preheating, I also melted some butter. Normally I would use a like basting brush, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to use a paper towel. I'm going to dip it into my butter and coat the top of this loaf while the oven is heating up. And as soon as the oven heats up, we're going to put the bread in there for 30 to 40 minutes. So once your oven is preheated to 400 degrees, stick your bread in the oven. Set the timer for about 30 minutes. One of the things you're going to need for a surefire way to know that your bread is done is a meat thermometer. If you've ever gone through making bread, thinking it was done, to put it on a cooling rack, then let it cool and cut into it and find out the center wasn't done, this solves that problem. Basically, when you pull it out of the oven, you want to immediately check the temperature. If it's not 190 degrees, the bread isn't done. So the timer just went off on the oven. Don't get too excited about shutting the oven off yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the bread out, put the meat thermometer in it, check the temperature. If it's not 190 degrees, it's not done yet. It's going to go back in the oven for a few more minutes. So we are above 190 degrees. That means our bread is done. So now that we are out of the oven, one thing you want to do while it's still hot is take some butter and coat the top of the bread loaf again. I forgot to record it, but I did do that. Um, if you made your bread in a loaf pan, such as I did, you want to just leave it in the pan until it cools down. This is still warm, maybe about 100 degrees, but it's not like the 100 200 degrees that it was when I took it out. Once it's cooled down, the bread will actually take and contract some, and that allows it to fall out of the pan. If you try to dump it out of the pan while it's hot, you'll never get it out. So I'm going to turn this over just like this. See that? And then once it's out of the pan, we can turn it over again so that it's up. Generally, you want to wait until it's all the way cool. So even though it's about 100 degrees now, you want it to cool down all the way before you cut it. I'm actually, it is 1.30 in the morning. I've got to get up in about four and a half hours. I'm going to bed. We'll cut this tomorrow. See, I've already been in it. I actually sliced a piece off this morning. Never even thought about finishing this video. I have some eggs in the skillet right now. Man, I did not cut that very straight. One thing is for sure, when you have chickens, you never have a shortage of eggs. So, uh, yeah. it's what it looks like. Bread. So let me get back to my uh, eggs and my breakfast at uh, 11.47 because it's been a crazy day. And uh, we'll get this video finished up. Hope you enjoyed.